Welcome to a new video in my channel and this is going to be a bit of an interesting mix because it's going to be model trains related and also PCB related but uh, or PCB way related but it's not going to be a PCB so first of all I just ooh, wanted to show you something it looks like I dress for this um, uh, wagon so this is my first wagon that I designed and built myself well the, the bogies are Macklin bogies, so this is not something that I designed. But um, uh, this is a high side, I think a high side gondola, um, well, a boogie design, and um, <clears throat> it is very similar to the, you know, typical ES um, uh, wagons that are, you know, used by many railways nowadays. But this was one of the older models, which I think is. Uh, it was uh, specific to the Hungarian railways, so they had these side skirts and it was a slightly shorter one and, you know, open doors and everything. But again, it was just a simple gondola car. But the, uh, what, what, what is, I don't know, maybe a little bit special about this one is that uh, it is made of steel. So this weighs about like two and a half kilos as it is. And then anything that you see in there is pretty much red, that's, uh, that's just my steel. So I had this designed in laser cut in a local company here, and uh, it uses various things. So the base is, uh, well, that's the main structure, is two layers of, I think it's three millimeter. And then I use one and a half mil for the sides. And then these uh, details are again three millimeters. And then these small details are half a mil. Um, and... I think these are the three dimensions that I use. So three, one and a half and 0.5 mil. And <clears throat> so this got laser cut and then everything is glued together using super glue. So it's not soldered. And um, yeah, everything is painted. And then I had these two Merklin boogies that, uh, well, I had them. They are very close to the prototype, but they are not exactly that. So uh, it is all looking good, but it's looking a little bit plain because, well, I only designed the um, uh, the metal parts because I knew that for all of the smaller parts I wanted to do 3D printing. And uh, <clears throat> now it is time to do the 3D print, well, uh, is to tackle the 3D printing. And I've designed all the small details, but obviously they are really, really small, like grab irons and handrails and that sort of stuff. But they are really small to be printed on my FDM printer, so, and I don't have a resin printer. And I thought, I want to use PCBWA 3D printing services to do those. And this is my first project, so this video is about how I did it and then how it actually turned out. And before I show you the process, I want to show you the end result as well. Well, give you a, give a sneak preview of the end result. So this is the, the, the car itself, uh, if I can get... I don't know... Oh, okay. I thought it's going to be too close for the camera. But no, it's not. So I 3D printed these really, really small details. So these are going to be like handrails and, you know, grab irons, which is going to go on the side. I also have a couple of other small details, um, like these uh, brake wheels. And also I have these, these are like uh, hooks. Uh, the I, I have no idea to be honest uh, because these hooks these things go in here and these are go I think these are go in here uh, and I guess maybe if there was like a really a long load then they would put a tarp onto the top and then they would use these to uh, like tie down points <clears throat> and I also created these really small handles which are going to here and these are like, you know, brake handles and brake levers. And I have a slightly different part here as well. So these are the things that I have gotten. And now I want to show you how this whole process went. So I think I've shown you this PCBWay website quite a lot of time. And then, um, I mean, obviously this is where you're getting the PCB quotes. But then if you go into 3D printing, then you and also, sorry, well, CNC machining and 3D printing, then you get a different um, uh, screen. So this is where you can go into the 3D printing side, and then uh, this is where you can, you know, upload your various files. 
And this process works ex uh, well, very similar to how you would, you know, design your 3D printers in your slicing software because you uh, you start from some sort of uh, uh, 3D, I think they are called mesh files, definitely the STL one. So that's the one that I use the most and I think that's, this is the most common one. So these are the STM files that I created out of uh, Fusion 360, well, I exported them from Fusion 360. And uh, yeah, so once you, once you load them, you get a small preview of these. Uh, so you can view it here as well. It takes a second to download. So this is what I designed in, uh, in Fusion 360. So this is going to be like a step ladder. And, um, and then you have an awful lot of things that you can specify. Obviously, you can specify a quality, sorry, quantity. And then you specify whether the measurement, because I think STL just contains numbers, it doesn't have units, so you have to specify whether it's millimeter or inches, and then you can design, you can select all the different materials. So this was a little bit of like experience, experiment for me, because uh, I don't know too much about the various uh, materials. So I created these, and I have also left a comment, so further down here you can leave a comment, like I asked them if they want to revise the the type of material that I wanted to select for printing because uh, I thought that maybe for example for this uh, small hand wheel that I have shown maybe it shouldn't be printed from resin because it's going to be too brittle maybe they it should be like TPU but I don't know whether the TPU can be resin printed in the, and of course I guess for every material there is uh, um, uh, pros and cons for uh, like the print quality and and the resolution and that sort of things and and they also mentioned I think it, it yeah it, it does mention here that deformation of the parts is uh, possible so obviously maybe for certain uh, materials you should not expect them to be dimensionally accurate well yeah so for everything I, I selected a standard right uh, this UTR so this one and as you can see, even if you select resin, you can select so many different resins. And then if you select nylons, then you still have a couple of different nylons. For example, glass fiber reinforced nylon. And then uh, I have to say, I mean, I, I don't even know all of these materials. I mean, I know ABS and PLE and PETG and TPU. I think those are the rubbery type. But I thought that these are the not the uh, like the FM, FDM technology. So I don't know whether it's only resin, which is the, uh, now I forget this other technology when it's, uh, um, you know, lit with UV and then it, it solidifies, but I think that's the resin one. So there is, you know, there, there is awful lot of information here. And for me, who, who only knows about, knows about the FDM uh, printing and I so far only used PLA, that was, it was really, you know, difficult to design. Uh, the, sorry, the, decide which material is the best. And as you can see, whenever you select something, there is a little bit of thing here, so you can click on this and then you can read more information about the material. So then it it gives you, I mean, of course, you can go into the data sheet, but then it, it gives you some details like, you know, it has better precision or, you know, more, I don't know, it, some other things that like structure and some other details. So, yeah like okay if you want translucent then it's going to look like this so it, they are really trying to help in order to pick the uh the correct part but i think in some cases it would be you know really really helpful if you if you know what you are doing which i did not really know and then this is why i wanted to use pcbb because not only that i don't have the printer to do it but also i didn't have the in-depth knowledge and also, if you look, I mean, there are some really uh, exotic materials down here, like aluminum and stainless steel and titanium and tool steel. And I wouldn't know whether, you know, this would be the type of resolution that I need. I mean, obviously, I wouldn't want all these small parts to be printed from metal. But okay. So, and then you have some, uh, I mean, you can upload technical drawings as well. But I just uploaded the SDL, nothing else. And then... You know, further down, you can do some, you know, some other things like, uh, uh, you know, assembly. If you want the parts to be assembled, they can do that as well. And uh, I think there was some other 
like yeah tap holes and threads um I mean, obviously, that would probably require some additional readings, but uh, sorry, documentation and then uh, files. But again, just for a simple readings, uh, yeah, also the surface finish, that's nice. You can get it painted by them. So they do really offer like a full, you know, service as well. So I think there is a lot that I could experiment here, but I just wanted the most basic, you know, printing service for the, for the beginning. And then finally, as I said, you have some special request and then you can upload your next file or you can just submit the request as it is. And then it gives you a quote um, and then but it, it also says that the um, so this is just an estimated price. And of course, it would differ uh, based on uh, so it would get reviewed. And then again, I guess uh, they would decide what the final price is going to be based on like I don't know, maybe, you know, you if you order 10, it would be, they would be able to print it in one single batch. So you don't, uh, so that's probably going to lower the price because uh, it will be printed in one go. And I guess that would always depend on, you know, what resin you select uh, and that would determine what machines they use. So this is sort of like a black box, you, you don't know. But um, the process works exactly the same as as it works for PCB uh, for PCB design. So you submit your request and it goes for a review, and you will get a notification when it is the review is finalized, and then you get an updated code, and then you decide whether you want to pay it or not. So the way it went for me is I have downloaded all these, and then uh, I get a message that they don't think that they would be able to print some of these parts. So I submitted like 16 different parts. And to be honest, I have only received these few that I've shown you. So the, the grab rails, the, um, the hand wheel, these two tie downs and the two brake levers. So I got six out of the 16. So at least I was told in time that they can't really print it or they wouldn't be able to guarantee and I sort of suspected that because I tried to print this, uh, all these uh, at a local firm here and um, um, I get the same feedback saying that they, they managed to print it but then when they were trying to separate it from the supports the, the structure break away. And I was hoping that, you know, maybe PCBWay has different um, machines, maybe slightly different technology. I mean, I know that there are some technologies where instead of printing supports, they print a filler material, which can be then dissolved away. Um, so this is what I wanted to experiment, but um, that's what I ended up with. So, so I still have a lot of small parts like these, like the step rails that I'm showing you here, which uh, could not be printed. I mean... I can't really give you a oh you can see the dimensions so it's like six millimeters that times eight millimeters times 20 so it has a long stem and this long stem i mean i don't remember the exact uh details but this uh sort of stem is i guess it's too brittle so i would assume that in a resin printer this would get supported along here and uh, when you would, you know, try to cut away the support, it would just break apart. And uh, this is why they are saying that it cannot be printed. So I'm not saying that they can do magic, but um, but they definitely have the expertise to tell you in advance whether it's going to work or not. So at least you are not paying for something which is uh, not going to be, you know, a good result, which uh, I think is more important than... Um, just to receive some rubbish in the mail, which uh, doesn't resembles the you know the original design because it couldn't be printed or it got damaged. So that's the that's the that was the overall process. Um, and uh, again, the review was done in a couple of uh, days. Yeah, I was still pondering what to do with the whole order, but they said that I still have the option to get the the remaining parts printed, and then this is what I did, and then it got shipped. And talking about shipping and all the other things, I just wanted to show you some of the, you know, how things got shipped, because I think it's, again, it's done quite professionally. Is uh, For example, I have these long grab rails. I think these are going to go at the end here. And you can see that they have this sponge, which they, you know, put a slit on the sponge. 
hopefully is in the view. And this is how they secured it. And then everything was, was bubble wrapped. And then I think in most cases it was bubble wrapped again. So these small parts were put in a Ziploc bag and then wrapped in some sort of um, uh, yeah protective foil. And then it was in a, a second Ziploc bag. Uh, and everything was packaged separately. And for example, these get grab rails because they have this funny shape. So I got another sponge, which some, or oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show this in camera. So this is the sponge. And somebody cut this in half and then created these small voids in them. And these handrails were put in like this. And this is how it got shipped. And obviously this was closed up and there was some masking tape put over it so it doesn't open. So, so they really pay attention how these things get shipped. And if you're not pay, if sorry, if you're not printing something so small or small delicate, then well, I guess it's going to be much easier for them. But I was really happy how the whole you know process went. And of course, then the whole thing got in a box, and that was in the you know the packaging material. And I also wanted to show you this. Uh, part that I received over the mail, about in the same box as a, I don't know, like a demo or a promo 3D print. So it's a small stand which says PCBW obviously. And this is also printed using the resin and this is the UTR8220 resin. So if I switch back to my desktop view, so you select the resin and from the resin here you select UTR880. Yeah. It shows here that that's a little bit greenish. And uh, I mean, yeah, it's, uh, I, I, I mean, obviously I've seen, you know, resin printed parts, uh, but this is, you know, fairly big and uh, probably not the best way to show all the capabilities of the resin printer, but there is this, um, uh, like this, um, I don't know, underlying here, which obviously is a very big radius and, you know, I can feel virtually no ridges or nothing like that. I mean, yeah, I know that uh, this is what the technology can do, but uh, it was really nice to see it firsthand. Or if there is this slope here and I can do this and it doesn't have the ridges, which the usual, I mean, you know, this would be like a cheese grater in if I would print this in, uh, in my FDM printer. And uh, it's a nice material. I mean, obviously there is a lot of uh, material in it and then it, it feels like, you know, really stiff and everything, but uh, um, I don't know how easy it would be to break it. I mean, obviously these are extremely small parts, so I don't know how long this is going to hold up against abuse. So if this uh, derails, probably this is going to be the first one to break away. But if I apply a little bit of force here, you can see, oops, you can see that the whole thing flexes and it these small ribs don't break or at least they did not so far so i have some you know great hopes for these definitely this is not my last um, attempt to use pcb way to uh, print uh, to do uh, 3d printing services so I think I'm going to be using them uh, in the future, but probably I'm going to be using, ooh, this is a lot of, <laughs> okay. So I think I will be picking slightly bigger objects, uh, which could be more easily 3D printed. And um, I've no idea what I'm going to do with the rest of the object, which are going to be like really, really nice small parts, uh, how I would be able to make them. But uh, that was an interesting journey and I'm pretty sure I'm going to follow that up. And uh, I'm also looking forward to maybe, you know, find a suitable uh, design that where I can test the metal printing as well, because that would be, you know, really interesting to see how that those turn out. But I think that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next video.